Hi there, this is Self-Critical Automaton. This is the first episode of my Let's Play of Mirror's Edge. This is one of my favourite games of all time. I've been looking forward to Let's Playing it for a long time. Um, I think I have a lot to say about it. I think it is a, uh, a flawed masterpiece, but a masterpiece. I think it's an absolutely beautiful game. I am currently in the latest flare-up of whatever bastard sickness I've managed to catch, so I am... Uh, going to be editing lots of coughs out of this, which is fun for me. Before we get started, I want to highlight a couple things and point out a couple things. First off, um, this is just quite a lovely menu. Uh, the art of the beautiful menu is um, not so widely used these days, which I think is a shame. Also, um, there's a solid unlockables gallery, which uh, you also don't see very much nowadays, but um, used to be pretty common in that era, which is, I think, something that should be brought back. It was kind of the era of complete entire experiences with lots of uh, supplementary material, something I talk about at the end of my uh, Bayonetta Let's Play, actually. So, um, yeah, something else I want to highlight is that if you pick the Select Chapter menu, you don't just get a, a list of levels that you might want to play, you actually get this rather beautiful model of the city, which shows you exactly where in the city each of these um, chapters takes place, and how they relate to one another physically. This is also something that you don't see very much in games, because games tend to take advantage of their ability to freely shift things around. Um, because in a simulated environment, things don't actually have to make physical sense, and um, levels themselves are usually hacked together in that way. I. Uh, I just think it's a nice touch that they've chosen to do that. It's also um, showcasing the visual style of the game in this uh, metaphorical way, because this is riffing on the traditional architectural sculpturing used in high-level architectural practice. They uh, tend to, while working on, you know, expensive, large civic schemes, to do these um, enormous balsa wood models. Um, with these plain, untextured objects representing how these shapes and spaces relate to one another. They're quite beautiful, and um, it's a clever referent for the game. So, right, all that aside, there's a couple things to do with setup that I want to go over. First off, um, I will be doing live uh, commentary all the way through this game, except for a couple of areas which are quite difficult. For those, I'm going to be, because I might have to start restart a few times, I'll be quiet and I will edit in dialogue afterwards, <laughs> but for the vast majority of the time I'm going to be talking live. Um, yeah, I'm going to start a new game and run through the uh, campaign mode on normal difficulty. Hard difficulty really only affects the combat in the game, and the combat itself is already quite unfair and also is not what the game is about. The combat itself isn't very fun. So yeah. Aside from that, there's two more things I think I want to say. First off, um, if you suffer from motion sickness when in first-person games, this might not be the series for you. Secondly, uh, if you have any kind of um, phobias about falling from great heights, if you have a fear of heights, this also might not be the thing for you. I, I don't know if videos will trigger that kind of reaction in people, so I'm just letting you know now. Secondly, I uh, want to post a poll on my Twitter for basically anyone who wants to comment on what I'll be Let's Playing next. This is a very short game, it's only 10 chapters and each chapter is only about 10 to 15 minutes. So uh, given that, I would like to, you know, start getting opinions in now about what I should do next. That'll be on my Twitter, there's a link here and there's a link in the description. Go follow me on Twitter, give me your opinions, I'd appreciate that massively. So without further ado, let's dive into this flawed gem. The city used to pulse with energy, dirty and dangerous, but alive and wonderful. Now, it's something else. The changes came slowly at first. Most didn't realize, or didn't care, and accepted them. They chose a comfortable life. Some didn't. And those who refused to conform were pushed to the sidelines. Criminal they became our clients. We call ourselves runners. We exist on the edge, between the gloss and the reality. 
the merest edge. We keep out of trouble, out of sight, and the cops don't bother us. Runners see the city in a different way. We see the flow. Rooftops become pathways and conduits, possibilities and routes of escape. The flow is what keeps us running, keeps us alive. Training time, Face. Yeah, I know you hate it, but that fall took you out of commission for a while. And now you're back, you gotta keep sharp, especially in this city. Check out these new training grounds, pretty slick, huh? So let's not run around duty, so get to her and just go with the flow, okay? If I remember correctly, there were supposed to be in-engine cutscenes for most of the, um... Instead of the Flash animated ones, but... <laughs> they actually changed that really late in development, if I remember correctly. And, um, it was kind of criticised for this tonal mismatch between the two, but I actually think it brings something special. Um, that's our friend Celeste, she's the main character's best friend. Hi Faith, welcome back. She also has supreme sports lesbian energy. Which I appreciate, and I assume you do too. Um, as a tutorial, this works pretty well to showcase the basic mechanics of the game. However, I do have a criticism of it, namely that it commits the same sin so many tutorials do. It um, requires you to do exactly as it says, and if you do otherwise, it punishes you by sending you back to the checkpoint. Indeed, uh, previously when it said to press left, but left buffer to jump and uh, left trigger to duck, um, if you press either of those buttons incorrectly, it will in fact just put you straight back to the checkpoint, which is kind of bizarre. It doesn't even say do it again, it just uh, it actually teleports you back to a checkpoint, it reloads you briefly. There's some interesting stuff to say about the animations in the game that I'll get to much later on, but for now I just want to point out that all of Celeste's animations here are actually canned. None of this stuff is um, what uh, Faith looks like if you uh, hack the camera to go into third person mode. Um, it's all uh, scripted, pre-generated animation. So the aesthetic qualities of this game really shine through. It doesn't look dated at all, and there's really been no games that look anything like it since, in the... over a decade now since it came out. Um, it's absolutely gorgeous with this kind of... Um, it kind of captures a physicality of urban spaces that is very representative. I have seen places that look like this. I have seen places that have been forcibly attempted to be kept pristine and yet still have grot from the rain because they are never cleaned because why would you clean a rooftop um it really kind of ties the game together thematically this uh veneer of incorruptibility i can almost feel the weather of a day like this on my skin sitting here in the dark on a on a September no October evening I've had days like this I've woken up first thing on a late spring morning to icy cold breeze blowing across my skin and scalding hot sunlight slanting in through a window and I've opened the window and I've smelt the air and I've known it's going to be very hot later but for now it's pleasantly cool and that's what these kind of blindingly white uh, city spaces and um, harsh blue skies say to me. I think it evokes that incredibly well. It can actually be quite hard to land on these. That's one of the many things you learn as you go through the game. Additionally, the coil, which we're about to learn about, is one of the most useful techniques in the game. It's one I'll be using almost constantly, because not only does it let you extend your jump distance slightly, since your hitbox go shrinks in the air, you can get onto, um, you know, if you wouldn't normally be able to jump over a fence, if you coil, you can usually just get your feet over the top. It can also actually reset the angle of your momentum. If you, um, if you jump and coil and land sideways, your momentum is reset to the direction you're facing, which is very useful for turning corners, even though it's very unrealistic. Merc wants me to run you through some sparring. You know how he is. You ready? Okay, come on. 
So yeah, um, as I'm sure you've noticed from most of your friendships in life, the first thing you do when you meet a friend after you've been sick for a while is try and punch her in the face. And then this as well. Well, unless you miss. So yeah, always make sure you punch your friends in the boobs. It's uh, traditional. Oh yeah, you see it teleported me back because I did it wrong. I'm supposed to slow kick. Actually, I might have done that right. <laughs> Let's run through some weapon disarms, just in case. I am not very good at disarming, so I won't be doing a lot of it during the game. Remember what I taught you, Faith. Isolate them. Fight them one at a time if you gotta fight. However, I did manage to get the timing right that time. Um, but for the most part, I'm gonna be skipping it. I love the way she uh, kind of waves her hands open, like, oh, like Faith. That was that was my gun. I just bought that. Why would you throw it on the ground? I will also forget that I have the option of slow motion all the way through this game. I have played this game genuinely about a hundred times. I always forget. Okay, that's enough training, ladies. Gotta get to the real thing. Drake's got a job for yourself, so check in with him. Faith, let me know when you're ready to get going. See you later, Faith. So yeah, that is the completion of the tutorial. I also love these cheeky little loading screens. So this is the real intro to the game, and um, I think it's absolutely gorgeous. I think this little sequence of animation with the uh, opening credits projected onto the open spaces between the buildings is genuinely just beautiful. It actually featured in the marketing material, and ver from the very first trailers, Teenage Me was completely sold on the concept of this game. It also has a fantastic soundtrack, which I'm probably going to talk about a few po at a few points through the uh, run. But, um, yeah, just seeing footage like this instantaneously sold me on the concept, and I fell in love with it before it even came out. So here we are in the first real part of the game. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure the birds are real impressed, mate. But once you finish showing off, you think you might concentrate on some actual work? Get to left in position for a handoff. You need to get the delivery to her. She'll be near the communication tower ahead of you. So as I mentioned with the coil, uh, you can't normally, you know, hop straight over that uh, fence. If you coil, you can get your feet just up on top of it and get over the top. So that's something we'll be doing constantly. I hope I get this right. There we go. So amusingly, if you make it across here fast enough, you get a little bit of praise from your employer. If you do it too slowly, he tells you off. That's rude. Normally that's absolutely fast enough to count. Um, oh well. So I'm going to be kicking down a lot of these doors as we go through the game. Screw you, guy. Um, but I actually hate the animation from when you are running and doing it. I'm probably going to slide kick most of them open because I think it just looks way better. Wires are fizzing about you, Faith. Sounds like some blues are headed your way. News chopper tipped them off. Also, the materials rendering in this game is genuinely impressive. It's... It seems like an odd thing to say, but I have been inside industrial spaces that look like this, that had this thickly caked acrylic paint, corrosion resistant, on every surface. I have been in corridors that look like this. I know what they smell like. Uh, also fall down sometimes. So, it's, um, that splattered paint can is one of the few times we'll actually see things like that, where it's evidence that this isn't some kind of elementally existing platonic zone. Um, so here, there's something interesting to say, but I'll do that in a second. So you instinctively run from the police, because you should. Like, have you met the police? Uh, but if you use a, um, a roll to redirect your to redirect your momentum, uh, what happens is that I'm patching Celeste. You there, Cell? What the hell's happening? I can hear gunshots, and that bird seems a little too curious. They actually start firing almost immediately. Get your ass ready to move. 
and if you're not careful they can kill you basically right at the start. Incidentally, these red objects in the environment are part of a mechanic called Runner Vision, which highlights routes through the environment that it, uh, you know, easy, but they're not actually the fastest routes. Blue's ahead. You're gonna have to get through them. Now remember, children, jump kick the police. And then kick him in the balls. Yep, I can see face now. So we're approaching the end of this first chapter already, and I hope you're going to stick with me for the rest of this game because it is genuinely brilliant. There are more blues on the way. Come on, Faith. CPF on you too. Hey, throw me the bag. <laughs> okay, I got it from here. Okay, they're playing rough cell. I'll be fine. Get out of here. If you pass through this section too fast, that helicopter is too early in its animation and you fall to your death. You gotta get off that roof, mate. Don't care how you do it, just do it. This shot also featured in the marketing material. It shows off, um... I mean, it's just, you know, a gorgeous shot. <laughs> Let's you know who you are and, um, is literally the kind of titular mirror's edge. It's meant to be a low-key job. Why the hell were they shooting? Nothing. They just opened fire. Don't know what the hell's happening. I'll ask around. Get your ass back to base, Faith. Also, this game's themes of uh, state surveillance, the panopticon, and uh, the absolute oppression of any kind of resistance to fascist authority seemed slightly futuristic in 2009. In the modern day, it just seems bizarrely prescient. Anyway, that's going to be all from me for today. This is, as I said, one of my favourite games of all time. I really hope you come on this journey with me. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Please remember to like and subscribe and check out the links in the description. Thank you so much for watching.